paddling will improve most rapidly and you'll have more fun if you have the confidence that your roll is reliable. A successful roll requires the correct performance of a few simple body motions. With proper technique, rolling a kayak is effortless. However, the motions are very counterintuitive and you've probably never had to learn anything upside down in the water. We're going to teach a sweet version of the roll that most paddlers do. And we'll utilize a unique step-by-step -step system that's sure to have you rolling quickly. We emphasize a fluid roll, an effortless roll, and a roll that keeps your body in the protected position. Years of experience teaching has proven that this roll works very well. The technique works as a tune-up to a shaky roll, and it provides new paddlers with a safe roll, similar to the one experienced boaters rely on. It's a very safe and protected roll, because your torso stays near the surface and moves smoothly to an upright position. This roll protects your shoulder from injury by keeping your arm in front of your torso and by utilizing the large and powerful knee and torso muscles that help right the boat. Because this roll is smooth, quick, and fluid, it works well in a variety of conditions from huge surf to serious steeps. This roll works for many different body types, from the young and gumby-like, to those who are stiff and not as flexible as they used to be. Some other rolls require a wind-up that can be a challenge in a deep, wide boat. But this roll technique starts the boat rotation immediately, so it excels with any boat design. We know that other excellent rolling styles and teaching progressions exist, so if you know one, set it aside while you learn this roll. With an open mind, you'll be best able to learn this easy version of the kayak roll. In time, you'll build on this foundation to incorporate your personal style. You'll find this roll to be adaptable. You can finish at 90 degrees to the boat, or skull forward to finish over the front deck. The easiest version to teach has a unique finish position that is gentle on the body and reliable. It's a style that's easily learned and easy to tune up for any body type and in any boat. The roll is easy, it's effortless if you do it correctly. It's not about strength, it's not about power, it's all about finesse and technique. It's about getting your body relaxed, getting good extension away from the boat, allowing the boat to come up underneath you because that's what brings you up out of the water. Watch the roll from the setup through the fluid motion which rolls the boat to the finished position. Here's a different view, the setup the synchronized torso twist and boat rotation into the finished position. In the kayak roll, we'll show you a set of drills that help you learn an effortless roll. You'll start by doing boat rotations, learning the setup position and the finished position, learning the sweep, then putting it all together, gradually going deeper into the water. It might look like the paddle blade is doing the work of a roll, but that just isn't so. In fact, the more force you apply to the blade, the less likely you'll develop a reliable roll. So instead, use a fluid torso and knee action to right the boat. Let's examine the knee action first. What allows me to roll the boat upright is my connection at the knees. An efficient roll uses one knee at a time. If I raise my head, it results in engaging the wrong knee, and that pulls the boat over on top of me. This is the knee, 
the rolling knee that I want to use to roll the boat upright. In order to do that, I have to leave my head down so that I can pull that knee up. It's the same thing on the water. To effectively roll the kayak, I want to use my connection between this leg and the boat to push this edge to the surface. But my instincts have me lifting my head, and when I do that, I engage this knee and the boat falls over. Lifting the head is a common cause of a failed roll. Going for air means that the knees are not working to roll the boat. Keeping the head positioned correctly assists the rolling knee in righting the boat. The foundation of the roll is understanding how to get the boat upright underneath you. The key is using your body rather than being dependent upon pressure or support from your hands or the paddle. To simplify your learning process, we'll start by isolating the upper and lower body actions that roll the boat. This drill is the first step of relaxing and learning the effective yet counterintuitive motions that roll the boat. The ideal is to practice with an instructor to give instant feedback so you develop correct muscle memory. I want you to put your hands in mine, just nice and relaxed, and bring your head over onto your hands like you're trying to take a nap. And then we're going to just bring the boat over on top of you, and just relax. Now I want you to use that rolling knee underneath to just gently twist the boat up. Beautiful. And then let's bring it back over again. Just let yourself float. Twist it up again. Awesome. Very good. You can also practice boat rotations on the bow of a friend's boat. It's not preferable, but you can also learn the same motion on the side of a pool or a dock. If you must practice this way, imagine that your fingertips are resting on eggs that will break if you push too hard. Also, keep one shoulder or your face in the water so you avoid lifting your torso and head. Be precise, because only perfect practice makes perfect. The next step of boat rotation practice is centering over the boat by sitting up slowly while keeping the head down. Sitting up too quickly develops bad habits. Okay, Eric, now I want you to go ahead and pull on that rolling knee and bring the boat up. Oh! <laughs> All right, you can feel how much you were pulling your head. All right, this time, what I want you to do is turn your face into the water and blow bubbles as you pull on that rolling knee. Okay, you gotta keep that head down. Great. Okay. All right, turn your head, blow bubbles, pull on the rolling knee. Great, Eric. As an instructor, it's really easy to sense how much pressure a student is putting on my hands, and I don't allow that. I want them to learn the right body motion. Now, once that motion is ingrained, we can work on recentering the body over the boat. So this time, Eric, at the very end, I want you to think about pulling this hip up and sliding that left hand towards that side of the boat. Light on the fingers, blow bubbles, roll the boat. Excellent. To isolate the boat rotation and to simplify the learning process, we've been teaching you boat rotations with the body at 90 degrees to the boat. Next, we'll show you how moving the body generates leverage to roll the boat. You have two choices as to when you roll a kayak. You can go ahead and sweep your torso out to 90 degrees and then roll the kayak all at once. Or you can go ahead and as you sweep out to 90, use that leverage that's generated so that by the time you're here, the kayak is upright and you're done. Just moving your body out to this point generates a lot of energy in this knee. And ultimately it's that energy that we're gonna use to roll the kayak. In the roll technique this video explains, you start riding the boat as soon as you leave the starting position. The riding action uses the energy generated as soon as you start to move your body. Your natural body tension links your shoulders to the knee. As you initiate the paddle movement, the rolling knee brings the boat upright.
So when you move your body out along the surface, the boat is going to start to roll. We've seen how the boat rotation comes from activating the correct knee. Combining that with the correct torso motion provides the basis for a quality roll. When you're totally comfortable hanging out underwater, you can do smooth and fluid boat rotations with very little pressure on your hands. And you're ready to start learning with the paddle. We'll teach you the body motions required in the roll. A quality setup is the foundation for the roll. The purpose of the setup is to orient and protect you and get your body and paddle in position ready to roll the boat. An experienced kayaker is going to be able to roll on either side. But to begin, it's easier to learn one side well. We'll start with the right blade forward. In the wet exit, the student learned to tuck forward to stay protected while underwater. In the setup for the roll, I'm going to ask her to lay her paddle parallel to the side of the boat with a flat front blade. And I also want her to modify her tuck by bringing her chest over the outside of her thigh. This is really important. It also allows her to push her hands well into the water so that when she's upside down, this paddle is going to be above the surface. To curl your body up into this setup position, do a sit up to pull your head and torso up to the outside of the setup thigh. Move your torso to the side. Check that your head is tucked to outside your thigh. Then you can get your forearms on the side and the blade flat on the surface. Don't tuck forward for the setup. Tucking straight forward makes it more likely that you will pull in the wrong direction. Instead, you want to curl to the side so you can move the blade in the correct direction. When you're upside down under any conditions, it's really important to feel these same spots on your forearms against the side of the boat, because that's what gets your hands and the paddle up out of the water where you really want them to be. The blade has to be on the water before the boat can roll. So once you have the entire paddle in the air, place the front blade on the water. Hold the paddle very lightly in both hands and wiggle your fingers. A tight grip translates tension to the rest of your body, making you more likely to pull the blade down, which will hurt your roll. Instead, think of a gentle grip, like holding the shaft between thumb and forefinger. Being underwater can be disorienting, so learn to find the setup position, no matter how you flip. To review, the setup starts with your head to the side, with your forearms against the boat. The blade is floating on the water. Loosen up your fingers, feel cool air on them before you start the sweep. Be patient, the setup is the foundation for a roll that works, so perform it exactly. Check out this finish position. My torso is twisted around and I'm looking down the shaft. The back hand's at the shoulder with the elbow jutted forward. Finish position is your target as you come out of the water. To help you develop a smooth and resistance-free rolling motion, we teach an exaggerated blade angle in the finish position. Your knuckles should be curled back to the shoulder with your elbow jutting forward. As you are learning, you'll find it handy to use this finish position as a checkpoint, so you can be sure that you've used the correct form. What I'd like you to do is close your eyes and take your body to that perfect finish position. Excellent. Now open your eyes and you can see that you brought this spot on your chin to the spot on your shoulder. You can see the stern of your boat. 
You shed the resistance with your paddle and your hands are nice and loose on that shaft. This finish position will help you avoid painful shoulder injuries. Shoulder injury is caused by the instinctive action of lifting the head while pulling down and back on the paddle. In this position, the shoulder is most vulnerable to muscle tears or shoulder dislocation. At the beginning of the roll, your shoulder is well protected because your elbow is in front of the chest. To keep your shoulders safe throughout the roll, twist your torso while watching the blade. To protect your shoulder, you have to twist and watch the blade. Any shoulder pain is an indicator that something is wrong. So take some time off and refine your technique. If you finish rolls with your hands off center, you'll be off balance. Recenter your body by sliding the blade in. You can also lift your hip. Taking a stroke will help you recenter. Once your roll is reliable, you'll learn to quickly react to get rebalanced and on your way. Here are the key points of the finished position. Your torso is twisted around, you're looking down the shaft with your hands loose, your knuckles are curled back to the shoulder, and your elbows jutted forward, and your hands are centered on your body. Now let's study the movement that links the setup with the finished position. Effortless rolls are done with the blade angle neutral throughout the roll. With your hands loose on the shaft, think of letting the paddle blade float across the surface of the water. Visualize this. In the perfect roll, the flat blade of your paddle it's just gliding over the surface, like it's slicing through whipped cream. No pressure, no resistance, no nothing. A climbing blade angle causes many paddlers to muscle their rolls, finishing with a lot of pressure on the blade. This leads to a failed roll or a less desirable and exposed finish. Resistance on the blade causes you to lift your head which disengages the rolling knee. Too tight a grip can also lead to the blade diving if the wrist and torso steer the blade towards the bottom. Remember, effortless rolls are done with a gentle grip so the blade angle can stay neutral throughout the roll. When you're upside down, the normal tendency is to pull down but underwater, that results in the paddle going to the bottom, and you feel a lot of resistance on the blade. This illusion of support kills the roll. Instead, use your torso to sweep the blade away in a wide arc. When the paddler is upside down, we really want to avoid them pulling the paddle towards the bottom because they're using just their arms. So we're going to try and get your entire body involved in this. And think about the torso, the arm, and the paddle, all as one unit. That's it. Feel all that pressure on this knee? Mm -hmm. That's what's going to roll the kayak when you get upside down. Think of the blade floating on the surface in the setup, then slicing through the water to the finish. You can practice a false sweep. This false sweep exercise may help you relax Move the torso in the correct direction while you keep the paddle gliding lightly near the surface. As you move away from the setup position, it's important to apply pressure only to the rolling knee. You might even drop the other knee to keep it from interfering. If both knees are pressuring the thigh braces, it can be very difficult, if not impossible, to roll the kayak. Before you even start your sweep, I want you to think about dropping your non-rolling knee out of the thigh brace a bit. This will ensure that only the correct knee is pressuring or activating the boat. Extending the torso out starts the pressure in the rolling knee, 
then twisting the torso finishes the boat rotation. Twisting the torso moves the blade and maintains the pressure on the rolling knee. Let's first take a look at how moving the shoulders will move the paddle. Go to your perfect finish position. Twist forward. Notice that the only reason this paddle moves is because his shoulders are turning. Now let's take a look at how twisting the torso maintains the pressure on the rolling knee. Twist forward. This twisting motion moves your body and blade to the finish while you maintain pressure on the rolling knee. This initial extension out away from the boat activates the rolling knee. Then the twisting action continues the boat's rotation. Pressure and resistance on the sweeping blade make it impossible to do an effortless roll. If at any point you do feel pressure, it's very easy to dump that resistance and that function is controlled by the back hand. Let's take a look. Beautiful. So, the back arm is critical because it keeps the blade neutral across the water. The back arm takes a smooth, continuous motion from setup to the finished position. You can practice moving the back hand from your lap to the finished position with your knuckles back and elbow forward. Eliminate the feeling of a strained roll. Shed the resistance. To review, the sweep moves the blade gently, as if it's floating on the surface, from the setup to the finished position. The sweep involves relaxed hands and arms, starting in the correct direction, maintaining pressure on the rolling knee, twisting your torso to move the blade, and rolling your back hand back to touch your shoulder. Synchronize the setup sweep, and finish position. When you do, you'll be rolling consistently. Basic steps to learning the roll include doing boat rotations, practicing the setup position, and the perfect finish, learning the direction of movement, rehearsing the false sweep, and twisting at the torso, then putting it all together, gradually going deeper into the water. Your goal is to develop the correct muscle memory. Work on your roll no more than 20 minutes at a time. Finish a session on a perfect roll or drill. It's normal to back up a few steps to reinforce correct muscle memory. If you get three in a row wrong, stop. A day off often helps your muscles absorb the memory and timing. Don't be discouraged. Every person learns the motion at their own rate. To develop a bomb-proof roll, practice. First start by rolling in calm water, and then take it to slightly more challenging conditions. When that feels reliable, try flipping and rolling with your blade helped by mild current. You can practice turbulence by changing setup sides underwater, 
flipping with one hand on the shaft, and sprinting before you flip. Or you can have a friend provide turbulence. The quality of your roll is a direct reflection of your setup. Always go to the proper setup position. Many rolls fail when paddlers omit that step. Be calm, have a mental checklist, and a mantra of any key items that make your roll succeed. It's nice under here. I think I'll go to finished position now. You can roll almost any boat, but a snug fit makes it much easier. Let's take a closer look at how you connect to the boat. We refer to the knee as doing the work, but really it's the inside of your thigh against the brace. If your knee slides at all in the boat, you may need additional outfitting. Most boats will require customized padding to keep your knee in position and to make rolling easier. Padding by your hips can keep you from flopping around. If your knee and thigh is slipping at all, learning the roll will be much more difficult. One might think that a sea kayak is difficult to roll. Not necessarily. A rudder poses no problems for a roll, and you can roll with a moderate amount of gear on the deck. Rolls for a long and loaded boat may be slightly slower, so be patient and precise. For stability, load the heaviest gear on the bottom. With a strong roll, you can even roll a boat full of water or re-enter your boat and then roll. We highly recommend you take a beginner class before learning to roll. The course should cover controlling the paddle, safety information, and other important skills like slow and controlled wet exits. Practice until you feel totally comfortable upside down or else your brain will be too distracted to learn the roll. It's best to start in a warm pool. Your time underwater is much more pleasant if you wear nose plugs. You'll definitely want to get accustomed to rolling while wearing a PFD, since it affects your buoyancy, flexibility, and range of motion. Always check the water depth, and wear a helmet any time that you might need it. So are you ready? To warm up, let's paddle around a bit. Then you'll be set to roll. If this is your first exposure to rolling, you might want to turn off the tape here and return later with fresh muscles and a clear mind. <laughs>